Hello, everyone. So I'm going to present you a joint work with uh, Martin Diga and Lydia Rodriguez de la Nava. And um, it's actually not about uh, OMR, but uh, it's about music notation, and uh, in particular, drums notations and uh, transcription of electronic drum kits. So the objective of uh, our work is actually quite simple to explain. We have a drummer playing on a MIDI drum kit, like the one on the picture. His performance is recorded in a MIDI file. And we want to convert this MIDI file into a readable uh, music score in an XML structured uh, format. So a few words about the MIDI file, if you don't know well. Uh, it's actually a sequence, a trace of uh, events uh, with the date uh, when the event was played and also on which part of the drums it was played. And actually the dates are the dates of starting, the starting of notes only, the date of the ending of notes is not relevant for drums. So in this presentation, I'm going to give you first a few elements about the drum notation because it's a, it's a bit uh, specific compared to the other notation that we have seen today. And then I will explain the different subtasks uh, that we have used uh, for the transcription, in particular parsing techniques and uh, rewriting techniques that we have used. And then I will discuss, I will show you some, some um, first results that we have obtained. So as promised, first a few uh, basics about drum transcription, uh, drums uh, notation, sorry. So it was first defined for teaching purposes with the rise of drum uh, schools in Europe and in the US. And the purpose of uh, the drums notation was uh, the preservation of uh, the performance of excellent drummers. And uh, unfortunately, <clears throat> there are no standards currently for uh, drums notation, but there are different, there are essentially two widespread notations in use, one for US and one for the Euro Europe, and um, differences between the two uh, versions are uh, mostly on details. And I would like to emphasize also that uh, the readability of the drum scores is very important, of course, like for all the musicians, but especially for drummers, because um, usually they have to play very fast. And also you have, you have to display many elements on one score and the, co the score can get very confused. So it's uh, one difficulty for the transcription. So about uh, more details about the, the notation. So we have here the representation of one drum kit and the main elements that you can have. So on white, you have the, the cylindric elements with a, a skin, the snare drums, the most important, and also some terms. Do you see my, uh, my mouse? Yes, yes, we yes. can see. Okay. Okay, and uh, so uh, you have a below uh, kick, it's also called the bass drum, that you play with a foot, or with a pedal, and a hi-hat, which are two symbols that you can also join with a pedal. And you can you play with the sticks also on the cymbals. You can play on different parts of the cymbals with the sticks. You can play on the main part, which is called the bow of the cymbal. It's the top part, actually. Uh, you can also play on the very top part, which is called the bell, it's a different sound that you obtain. And you can also play on the edge of the cymbal to produce a crash sound. And also for the drum, for the snare drum and the toms, you can play on the skin, on the head, on the head, or you can play on the edge also. It's called the rim to obtain the different sound. So the principle of the notation is that you have one pitch for every element of the drum which is fixed, so the pitch different in US and European notation. And you have different kind of note heads to represent the different uh, modes, different way to play. Like when you play on the edge of the cymbal here, or when you play on the bow of the cymbal with the cross. Okay, some other details about the notation. Uh, we, it's uh, possible to use accents for uh, the notes that are supposed to play louder and ghost note notation with parentheses for the notes that are on the opposite, supposed to play uh, less louder than the others. And um, you have also ornaments, it's very important. So 
uh, in drums, uh, the most important ornament is the flam, which is uh, obtained with a particular technique play, when you play with two sticks on one, uh, for instance, one snare drum, like in this picture, and um, it's denoted with an acacia the other ornaments are usually not denoted for uh, drum kits, but uh, only for orchestral drums. And uh, last but not least, uh, the um, uh, notation is um, the drums is denoted on only one staff, but for readability, you can have several voices denoted with the uh, direction of the stems, like here. And uh, what's important is that um, the division into voice is fixed once for all for a whole score or a whole book. And it follows a particular schema. For instance, here on the left, the ID, the schema is that the top voice represents the uh, notes which are played with the hands, with the sticks. And uh, the bottom voice is the notes played with the feet, the pedals. Another uh, schema, a common schema, is to represent on the top voice uh, some rhythmic patterns which are repeated re regularly, and on the bottom voice the other notes which are not uh, as regular. So here is an overview of the approach that we followed for the transcription of electronic drum kits. So uh, the, the main idea is that uh, we want to go from an unstructured some unstructured data in MIDI-Fi into a structure score. And uh, the idea that we followed for that is uh, parsing. Nagy borrowed for uh, programming languages or um, natural uh, language processing. So the, uh, uh, using a prior language, we pass the input into a parse tree. I will give you a few details about that. And then we obtain from this parse tree an intermediate score representation, and we, we do some post-processing. So the idea is that uh, in the is that we use a tree structure in order to represent hierarchies of note uh, groups in the score, in particular for representing the rhythm notation, which is very important for the drums. So this was in, implemented in a, an existing framework uh, called QParse for uh, transcription music transcription. So a few words about uh, parsing. Uh, a first subtask is actually for, for transcription, the rhythm quantization. So the idea is that you want to, to quantize the starting of notes, starting dates of notes from arbitrary dates into dates that can be displayed in a score. So a very common approach for this in uh, commercial software, um, like uh, here, Jared Vant, uh, is to use a grid. Oh, sorry. And uh, the grid, it's a, a sequence of uh, time points which are uh, equally uh, spaced in time. Like here, we have 16 nodes for the grid. And when you push in GarageBand this Q button, all the starting points of nodes are aligned to 16 nodes. So this is very easy to implement efficiently, but sometimes it does not give the expected result. For instance, here, assume that we have these inputs here on the, on the left. So these are the notes, the starting point of notes, and we want to align this point to a grid with uh, corresponding to 16 notes. So uh, four points to align. We obtain this alignment, and the corresponding notation is this. It's Notation which is nice to read, but it's also not very precise, not uh, poorly related to the input. So if you want to, uh, to obtain more precise output, we can uh, use a more precise grid, like uh, 13, uh, 32 nodes. Uh, but so we obtain a more precise um, uh, output, but the notation is also not so good, not so easy to read. In particular, we have this small rest added here because of the shift of the first note at the beginning. And this is particularly embarrassing in the case of triplets. For instance, here we want to align a triplet to a binary grid, 60, 64 notes, and we obtain um, a very complicated notation. And that makes uh, no sense in that case. So our approach for this uh, is roughly 
that we use instead of using regular equally spaced uh, grids, we use hierarchical grids. They are obtained by dividing the times, but uh, we do not divide uh, everywhere in the, uh, in the same way. For instance, here, for this input, we consider a division, an initial division in two. This is represented in this tree. So uh, from the time point zero to the time point one. And then the first part is further divided in two. And only the second part of the second uh, of the first part is divided into, and the, the second half, for instance, is not divided. The idea roughly is that we don't need to divide more here because there is only one node here that ought to be aligned with this point. So the notation that we obtain by alignment to such a hierarchical grid is more natural than what we obtain with uh, regular grids. But also, on the other hand, uh, there are exponentially many. Uh, hierarchical grids, of course, and it's not possible to brute force enumerate all of them to find the best, the best notation. So we used more uh, sophisticated techniques actually uh, based on a prior um, language specifying which grids are acceptable for notation. So it's actually a tree language, formal tree language defined by a weighted tree grammar. And we use dynamic programming algorithm in order to extract a best tree according to uh, the weight, a weight value computed by the grammar, which represents somehow the readability of the notation and uh, the distance, the fitness between the input and the output. So, using these techniques, we can obtain trees in order to represent uh, the input. Uh, since um, the drums, uh, is a polyphonic instrument. Um, when we align the input, the input events into such a tree, we can align several uh, several events, several events to the same time point. For instance, here we have in the same time a rise, uh, a right symbol, hit, and a snare drum note. But it's actually not. Uh, a big deal in that case because the uh, drummer has two hands and can play both in the same time. So what we do in our procedure is that we use a, a finite state machine in order to process the points that are supposed to be played in the same time and to check whether it's possible to play them. So in this first example with uh, 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 this tree and this notation, it's possible to play all of the notes. In the second example, it's also possible. So we, you note that here you have two snare drums uh, hit in the same time simultaneously. It means that actually it's a, it's a flam, so uh, displayed as uh, an ornament. But in the third example, in the last note, you have uh, the alignment of three snare uh, drums event and one uh, right symbol which also played by hand. So it's not possible to play it unless the drummer has four hands. And uh, in that case, this uh, grid is discarded. Instead, another grid can be chosen, like this one, where you have a triplet of uh, 32 nodes. So it's a matter of choice whether to keep this or not. It's actually selected in the prior language that we are using. Note also that in some cases, there can be some mistakes in the MIDI input because this goes of error of the um, captation of the electronic drum kit. And uh, we are uh, we also implemented in the FSN, finite set machine that we are using, the detection of some mistakes and the, the correction. How many times do I have uh, left, please? Hmm? Okay. <laughs> okay, so I, co I come back to the general uh, overview of the procedure. So I just I said a few words about the parsing techniques that we are using. So we obtain a parse tree from this. From the parse tree, we produce an intermediate representation of the scores. And uh, I won't detail this, but we I will tell you a few words about post-processing procedures that we use on that score before exporting it to XML. Uh, it's actually a uh, term rewriting that is used for the separation into voices. So as I said, uh, the voice schemas is, uh, are fixed for the drums. So it's quite easy to, 
uh, make the separation, the idea is that we separate one tree, so the general parse tree, into two trees according to the voice. So there is one voice in that case for the white symbol. So we obtain that first tree for the first voice and the high voice, and one other voice for the, uh, the other, so the bass drum, the, the kick, and uh, the snare drum. And we obtain the, this second tree to the, for the second voice, so the bottom one here. And this second tree actually is not nice to display, and it is simplified in order to, to obtain some, sing, some simpler notation. The idea here is that we have one bass drum kick followed by one rest. And so this is a, a 16 notes bass drum kick followed by a 16 rest. It's the same thing in the case of drum as having a eight note bass kick as here. And this is obtained by a simplification of this subtree using that term rewriting rule. So we are applying, we have actually a system, a whole system, a bunch of uh, different rules that we are applying to uh, the trees that we obtain. Uh, we obtain, and uh, there are some theoretical issues related to that. So like uh, which strategy we should uh, apply like bottom up or uh, top down strategies for rewriting on different positions, or are there some overlapping rules some conflicts and how to solve? A few words now about the... Sorry, Fran, one, yeah. one minute more. Uh, we, are, we are running out one of minute. time for your presentation. Okay. You, you can finish, but please. Okay, okay I'm uh, almost done. I'm almost done. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, just a few words now about the experiment that we have conducted. So we have used the Groove MIDI dataset by Google Magenta. Uh, it's actually some recordings, about more than 30 hours of recording of uh, good drummers on electronic drum kits. And the, record, the MIDI files are available on the, the, the uh, Magenta uh, website. And um, uh, the problem for us is that there are no score files in this data set. So it means that we could not use a ground trust for the evaluation, systematic evaluation of our procedure. So uh, essentially for that work and that paper, we have done 25 transcription of scores as a proof of concept in two MEI uh, formats. Uh, the scores are from 24 to 20, uh, 261 uh, bars, and the tempo is known for each score. And the transcription time was quite uh, fair, uh, a few, just a few seconds for each uh, score. Uh, we have used only one prior language for all the scores, uh, one uh, three grammar. And uh, yeah, it should be noted that we are able to detect the flams, the ornament also, which is not so common for uh, music transcription. So this is one example of what we, the results that we obtained. So it's not perfect. We are now working on uh, making it better. There are in particular some tri triplets that should not be here, according to experts. I forgot to mention that one of the author is a, a professional drummer, Martin. Uh, but there are not so many mistakes. For uh, to compare, for instance, when you compare with for with what we obtain with the mu score, when we input the MIDI in mu score, uh, our result is better. As you see here, so there are many triplets and many uh, strange uh, behavior sometimes. And also we tried with Dorico, and the input is even worse with uh, Dorico. So to summarize, we have uh, uh, we are working on a transcription procedure, working for um, MIDI drum kits, and uh, it's based on uh, parsing with prior quantitative language models. Uh, parsing is done with uh, dynamic programming techniques in polynomial time, and we also use post processing in order to improve the readability of the score, in particular with uh, term rewriting. So our perspectives for this work has to, uh, to first, um, obviously to, trans to transcribe more scores of the group MIDI data set, ideally the whole data set, uh, with correction by uh, professional drummer, manual corrections and analysis. And um, this would give a whole data set of drum scores that could be useful for uh, the evaluation of other stars, even for OMR, for instance. Another perspective could be to use our procedure in the back end of an audio to MIDI transcription procedure. Most of the known uh, proce uh, transcription procedure for uh, drums are taking um, audio, so acoustic recording of an acoustic drum kit into uh, audio files and 
converting them into MIDI files. So it fits well for our, our procedure to continue and to, um, to uh, produce a score and an end-to-end -end transcription uh, uh, procedure. And uh, another ongoing work is to is dedicated to the transcription of guitar and piano because they are um, uh, polyphonic instruments like drums. So we we would like to build on uh, the knowledge we gain with drum transcription for that. And the advantage of this is that for the piano, there are many data sets of recordings of piano with audio files and aligned MIDI files and corresponding uh, scores. And I thank you for your attention. Um, uh, I'm pleased. Thank you, Farhan. Uh, well, I think we consume the time for, for questions. So if Sorry. you have, no, no, no problem. I mean, if there is any quick question, we can have it now. Otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, we can save it late for later. Any mm -hmm. quick question there? I, I just had one quick thing, which is um, for all the um, recordings, was, were they done to a metronome? Yes, yeah, yeah, they were done with a metronome, and actually they were quite uh, steady, steady. So quite. Okay, so you basically you know what the tempo is, and you know where the beats yeah, are. The tempo yeah. is given. Actually, the yeah. tempo is even given in the file name. So that's something that uh, eases the transcription. Yeah. Okay. We don't have to 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 detect the tempo to evaluate the tempo in that way. Yeah. 